In today's video, I play another 200 days of Minecraft, bringing our total to 1,200 days. I've been working on this video for the past month, and oh boy, we get up to a lot of stuff. Hey, Emily. Yeah, you, Emily. I'm talking to you. Are you subscribed? You better be Emily. To all the people not called Emily, imagine all the Emilys freaking out right now. Anyway, if you do want to subscribe, that'd be great. And leave a like too, as the last video hit over 100,000. And that's kind of insane. Let's get into the video and see if I can believe it. I can't believe it. We're back in this world, starting off on day 1,000. And we get straight to work after having a little look at our castle by going and moving our beacon. It doesn't have much use here anymore, so I thought I'd grab it and we take it to somewhere else. But before we do that, we've got to do the things to get us ready for this video. And some of those things include going to the end and fixing up all our tools with the very loud and very annoying Enderman farm. And as you can see here, we fixed up all our tools. Headed home, slept in our big old triple bed here, had a little look out, and set off for day 1001. And here I found the center of where my end portal was, and then placed my beacon on the surface in the exact center point that the end portal is. Placed the full beacon down, as you can see, activated it here with some haste. And you're probably thinking to yourself, Joel, why are you doing this? Well, we are going to be working on a bit of a project, and that project requires some space. So of course, we have to clear out that space. And we spent the first nine days just chopping trees and digging up stone and rock, flattening this place, which is the equivalent of one and a half hours. Yeah, I did that. It would have taken a lot longer without the beacon, however, but you can see how much wood and stone and dirt we got here. Ridiculous amount. We also got a bad omen effect, so I had to go get rid of that really quickly before waiting till night so we could kill some skeletons as I had spotted a little fella hanging around while I was doing some clearing and I found him again. It's this little wolf here. And of course, any project needs a mascot. So of course, after a bit of struggle, we tamed this guy, brought him over to the little area we were working on, gave him a blue collar and named him Marty McFly, the Marty mascot, because why? Why not, eh? But speaking of projects, one project I hate is my creeper farm. It doesn't work very well and I hate it. So I thought, you know what? Let's just start fresh and make ourselves a new creeper farm. So I started gathering up a load of materials we're gonna need, which was a lot of trapdoors, but luckily we had so much wood from clearing out that area that we didn't have to worry. We also had lots of wool, and then we headed out into the ocean right by our portrait of Lizzie and started building up here and making a little platform. And this is where we're going to be building our new creeper farm. This is a creeper farm that I've built before in my Minecraft goals world a long, long time ago. It requires some magma, it requires some stone, and a few other little things as well. One of them being glass, as you can see here, I'm getting some glass smelted in my super smelter. And like that, we're already on day 12 somehow. I said hello to Gerald's stupid friend and Gerald himself, grabbed some iron from my iron farm and just gathered all these weird sorts of different resources that I was gonna be needing, including rails, hoppers, glass, redstone, you know, just basic stuff you need for automated farms. And building this thing on the ocean was quite annoying. As you can see here, it was rather awkward. I kept losing blocks into the ocean as it's quite high up and I also kept falling on the magma cube and taking damage. I also had to place a little bit under the magma cube as we're going to have our rail collection system here which was also very awkward to build but finally we got all that bottom bit set up and now what we have to do is we've got to create this sort of pattern here. I think this original design is from Logical Geek Boy so I will make sure to link his tutorial in the description but I was just copying it off my Minecraft goals world. I'm not sure if it's the most efficient farm but it used to work really well in that goals world and of course like most creeper farms it involves cats. So we brought the cats nearby so we could breed them up as we built this farm. And you can see here, we're creating one layer of this thing. And the great thing about this farm is you can just make as many layers as you want. I think I actually went for nine in the end. You can see also how stressful and annoying it is building this farm. But I thought I'd show you the building process of what I've got to do. And we basically just have to do this over and over again. And it is quite boring. So I thought, you know what? After moving our cats over to a little closer platform so we could move them over more easily later, I decided let's just time lapse this. So I did and you can see here all the layers building up. It took about four or five days or so to fully finish this thing. Well, not fully finished. You'll see I need to add a roof on later, but got to the point where we could start adding the cats. And oh boy, was this a disaster. I am immensely sorry to cat lovers out there as you are about to see the murder of many cats. One drowned there, another died in the magma blocks there. 
I, I, it was just a disaster all around. I actually eventually had this little system here where I brought them up to here and I was like, perfect, we can get them to walk across. And I thought this was flawless. The first time I tried it, it worked flawlessly. We got this little cat into the center here, plopped him down. And after quite a long time of pushing him into the center, we got him in there, but we also had another cat drown somehow. It must have fallen off the platform. I don't know. Cats were dying left, right, and center. So I had to go and get some more cob to breed up some more cats as they were just dying so often. It was getting kind of sad. We've only got one cat in place so far and three hovers have died. These guys really don't want to be part of this farm. As you can see here, I brought this one over and it just landed in the magma blocks and died instantly so that, that was good. I had to wait for more cats to be bred up so in the meantime I got working on the collection system down below including these rails here and it's very similar to the other collection systems I've done in my other build in the past. However this one is a lot more awkward to place but we got it all set up and running. It took around a day or so to get the rails sorted and then it took another day or so to get the redstone all set up and working. As you can see here it only requires one comparator, one repeater and a redstone torch and now the minecart will go up there and it'll be sorted but obviously we need some chests to collect all our gunpowder so i started plopping those down in this little pattern here didn't need that many as this thing isn't crazy efficient compared to like you know the sugarcane farm or whatever and i actually changed this later from stone to glass so nothing can spawn on it as the torches have affected the rates but it's cat time again baby that's right let's grab them onto this platform here and this time this cat just decided life isn't worth living if you're going to be stuck in a creeper farm so just jump straight onto the magma blocks so in the future I did find a way around that I just put all the trap doors up so that they wouldn't just wander off as you can see in a second however this one uh, did die again so yeah that's good but you can see all the trap doors are up there meaning the cats couldn't just walk off anymore which was a great improvement to the thing and we managed to get all the rest of the cats on the other layers with no deaths well hey I still can't however say that no cats were harmed in the making of this farm as let's be real five or six have died so that's not good but oh well they are worker cats and I bred them anyway. I'm trying to reason why this is okay. I know it's not. I'm sorry that I killed all these cats. I really didn't mean for it to happen okay. But anyway, roof. Yes, that's right. We're going to add this roof on. And this roof basically means that it'll make the entire farm dark. Meaning the creepers can spawn in as everything is set up and ready. We built a little AFK platform up here. And then we spent a day or two just AFKing. I think it was even a day. It was like 15 minutes or something like that. So not really that long at all. And we managed to get a decent amount of gold powder as you can see there so I decided to also head to the desert and grab some sand sand gunpowder Joel whatever are you going to be making that's right of course we're going to be making some TNT as our big project over here is that we want to clear out a space to our end portal as I hated going down that tunnel and I thought I would just make a big sort of ravine and as you can see we blew up our beacon instantly TNT everybody and after just blowing a few holes in the ground here I realized this method is probably not the best but I was was like I spent the last two hours building a creeper farm I'm gonna use the TNT so I placed all of it around here as you can see and uh, we managed to get quite a lot of ground cleared out as well as destroying our beacon once more luckily I didn't actually lose any emerald blocks during all of that but you can see it saved me a bit of time it's quite quick there although I would argue that building the entire creeper farm I could have probably just cleared out this area in that time anyway. But hey, the creeper farm will be useful for other stuff. But here I am just showing that we didn't actually lose any emerald blocks and I was able to place them all back. And I didn't know this, but you don't actually have to place another emerald in the beacon when you reactivate it like this. It just works. So that's very nice. I was quite shocked to find that out. But it's almost time to start what I'm going to call the biggish dig because I, it's like smallish. Never mind. Either way, I went and fixed up all my tools, prepared myself, gave Marty McFly a little nod to show my appreciation and we got clearing out some stone and oh boy, five and a bit days of stone clearing. Fun, fun, fun. Although I do have to say, watching the time lapse back, this is mega satisfying to watch, especially as you can see, we've got the different layers here. Did that on purpose. As of course, we're not just going to be clearing it out and leaving it that way. Oh, no, no, no. You will see what we're going to do. And you can see here how much stone we've managed to pick up. A lot of stone. But it also used up two of our pickaxes fully. So obviously, we had to go back into the end to kill some more endermen to get them nice and fixed. And look at the size of this hole. Oh, isn't that lovely? What are we going to place on there? Well, I guess you'll have to find out. And of course, we have to go to the nether. We just finished a time lapse. I hate the nether. I hate these hoglins. Can these hoglins just not exist anymore? Also, I kept this clipping because look at this sick fly. Look how navigate through the trees and stuff. I really felt like, you know, a bird for a second. <laughs> but either way, 
I guess we should probably get started on our project. I went up, gave a little nod to Lizzie, the moustached woman, and then we slept in our bed as I want to prove that I do actually use that before heading to the portal and we got adding in a little bit of the design we're going to be adding in. And I actually decided not to time lapse this first bit as we're doing a lot of time lapses and instead show you the building steps. And this was quite a sort of like complex floor. I did design this in a creative world beforehand because I suck at just coming up with these on the spot. And it's using a lot of crimson logs which I haven't really used in this world that much before as I want to use those sort of like end colors of like purple and like yellowy light yellow whatever it is cream I guess you would say and the whole point of this really is just to make it all look pretty is this ridiculous and impractical yes but I don't care also I found these diamonds in a chest while I was there didn't realize they were there the entire time but oh uh, well we don't really need diamonds but it's nice always to find them and then I did decide to actually time lapse this little last bit here so it's just building up some walls and you can kind of get a sort of idea of what it's going to look like in the future however we've got to go a bit higher as we're going to bring this thing all the way up to ground level and then I decided to try out that diamond trick you may have seen this before but basically you go seven blocks away from the clay, you dig down all the way to where diamond level is and you find diamonds. And I was like, does this work? So I dug all the way down and yes, it works. I did this three times and it worked every time. And I was thinking to myself, hmm, is this cheaty? It's kind of like abusing game mechanics, which a lot of people do with farms and stuff, but I decided I'll leave it for now and I'll let you guys decide in the comments. What do you think? Should I do that in the future to get diamonds? It does save me a lot of time, but I also feel dirty while doing it. So let me know, okay? And if you guys agree that it's okay, I'll feel less dirty. But it would be nice to have all those diamonds though, wouldn't it? Oh yeah. Either way, never time as we're heading over to the desert as we need to collect a load of sandstone. You could probably see earlier that the build is going to require some sandstone. So I went and got a load of sandstone. Look at all that sandstone. Lovely. However, we actually need smooth sandstone so when I got home I put it all in my super smelter and as quick as the super smelter is it's not that quick it can't get through all this sandstone that quickly and to be honest I was waiting around for a long time and I was thinking what can I do while I'm waiting for my sand to smelt so I went and chopped down some birch logs as I'm going to need some of those however my super smelter was too far away so wasn't working at the time so I decided to just grab what I had anyway and just take it with me and just get working because I didn't want to wait around for sandstone to smelt when I could be giving you a mega time lapse and this is about another six day time lapse here and you can see us building up the levels of this thing using these yellows and blacks and purples and I think it is starting to come together quite nicely. I want to make this sort of like spiraling pattern down and we just finished a time lapse so of course we got to go to the nether to collect some black stones, some crimson logs and once we got all those because I did of course run out we got working again on this thing trying to bring it all the way up to the surface here and as you can see oh it's coming together that big hole in the floor is starting to now look like a big purple and yellow hole instead oh yeah baby that's right however i did run out of materials again as you can see it's not complete and i also got the bad omen effect again because that always seems to happen while i'm building i hate pillagers please go away but look at it it's looking rather grand isn't it but we just finished a time lapse so back to the never to collect more crimson wood more birch wood oh my gosh this thing is requiring so much materials i didn't realize how big of a build it was going to be but here we started placing the last few planks and we finish it off in another two days and we got the basis of the bottom part done but don't worry there's more to come this is not the end but before we can even think about that we need to collect a few things and some of those things are some materials but on the way to collect those materials I spotted some horses so of course I trapped them in a fenced off area wait what you're thinking you didn't just kill them instantly oh no no I trapped two of them in there and then I saved the coordinates but then of course I killed the other three that were just hanging around Plus some more on the way as well. You'll see why I've trapped them later. But this is where we're heading to this little mesa biome here to collect some clay. As you wouldn't believe it, but I wanted some clay. I know, crazy. And then I headed home and I found some more horses on the way. And of course, I can't just fly past them. It, I think it's like physically impossible. Got a bit carried away. Killed them all again. And uh, I also picked up some dyes as well. As I realized I'd need some dyes. And in particular, orange dye. I realized when I got back, I could have just mined the orange mesa. 
but instead I'm an idiot and I just went and made my own. But here you can see we headed to the end as I wanted to get some more shulker boxes. I accidentally stumbled across a few ones I'd already looted, then found this absolutely terrible end fortress here. And you may notice that every shulker is dropping two shells every time because I added a data pack that makes that happen. I think killing shulkers is very, very boring. So to just speed up the process, I did that data pack. It's very common. A lot of people use it on their series. Along the way, of course, we managed to get some more elytra, some more diamonds, some cool diamond armor and tools and all that good stuff, as well as getting enough shulker shells to last us a while. We spent quite a while here, as you can see. We're just flying around, having fun, collecting gold. It's, uh, it's not that interesting, as I said earlier. But we got 40 shulker shells for ourselves, and I decided that this was enough and headed home back through the portal here. And of course, when I flew back through that portal, I hadn't set my spawn point. Woohoo! Meaning I had to fly all the way back. Killed some horses on the way because I hadn't spotted them before. Very nice. And you can see here, we're actually on 188 horses killed. Not bad whatsoever. We got home when we put all our stuff in our chest and our sorter system, made all those shulker boxes and stored those away as well before heading back to those horses we'd left before. And of course, I spent the next few minutes just taming them both. Well, actually, I only tamed one, put a saddle on it, then put a lead on the of one, and off we head home. And this is quite a long journey, and it's not easy terrain, as you can see here, through the jungle. So it took us a couple of days to get through this whole thing, cross weird, awkward lakes like this. But finally, after a lot of struggle, because horses are stupid, I made it home to my bridge and to my storage system, where I made myself some fences and we're actually going to place these down just outside the project we're working on. As, of course, we are going to breed them up because I was kind of getting sick of going out and looking for horses to kill and I need like some quick satisfaction sometimes. So I thought if we bred our own horses and didn't kill too many, we could kill more horses overall. And speaking of things that are convenient, I decided to go AFK my gunpowder farm for a little while. AFK did quite a lot there, went down, looked, and didn't actually have that much gunpowder. So I thought, you know what? Another day will do. So I spent another day up there, AFK'd, and we got a little bit more. And I got the gunpowder because I was running a bit low on rockets. So I added all the gunpowder into our firework shulker, along with some paper as well. So we won't get low on rockets in the future. But what we were low on is sandstone. And we're going to be using a lot of sandstone to build whatever we're going to be building next. So I got three boxes of sandstone. Lovely. However, it does have to be smelted. And our super smelter in our castle was too far away while I was working on stuff. So it wasn't working. Working. So I decided to build another super smelter quickly. These things aren't that hard to make as you can see here It's just furnaces and anvils and we've got access to a lot of iron because of our iron farm So we got this set up pretty quickly with a few bits of redstone here and there some chests and off we go All we need is to add the coal and I mined a lot of coal as you can see here place that in However, I've now run out of coal or blocks So in the future it's gonna be kind of awkward to get coal So we're gonna have to come up with a solution for that somehow we need some other type of fuel and I I have an idea for earlier, but here you can see the super smelter is off and running and I fell into a ravine. Now that's over, we can have a little sleep, breed our horses again, and then collect a load of birch wood very aggressively for some reason. I don't know why, but we need a lot of birch wood. So I spent two whole days chopping birch trees, which is incredibly boring. So I decided to condense it into a time lapse for you there. And look how much birch wood we got. Oh, it's glorious. Look at all these materials. It's almost time to get started. But before that, let's breed some more horses because we need to slaughter them later. They really the annoying horses like you can't tame them straight away which means you can't breed them straight away and you know what else is annoying dying i died in the never whilst collecting stuff and then of course i ended up back at spawn again so i had to use my emergency elytra and my rockets and food headed back into the never to go collect all my stuff of course which went nice and smoothly as you probably predicted and we just managed to get past all the hoglins snuck by them all just kidding we died again this time we have no emergency elytra we're stuck here and we have to walk and use boats ew and it took us a full day to get back home. So this time I grabbed some spare armor and we headed into the never again a little bit more prepared and hopefully we won't die this time and I'll spoil it for you right now. We didn't. We managed to kill all these stupid hoglins, which honestly I hate. I think these are my least favorite mob in the game. They're just so annoying. I don't know what it is about them, but we managed to recover all our stuff and we hadn't lost anything, which is lovely. And I went to chop some more trees and this gas started shooting at me. So I was like, you know what? I'm leaving the never. So I did leave the never. 
and instead grabbed some of those red mushroom things and some bone meal and started making my own trees, which I thought was a good solution. I also tamed some more horses to breed. I was just, you know, living a different life to what I normally live. And after spending a while chopping these trees down, I remember why I didn't do this. The amount of never what block that was left over was ridiculous, so much so that it was just taking way too long and decided, you know what, this is stupid. Let's head back to the never and chop these trees again and also kill this child because he looked at me funny. He tried to escape and he did a pretty good job getting between me and these hoglins, but you know what? You can't escape me, child. You're dead. Sorry, I'm not sure what happened there. Instead, let's, you know, let's just change the subject and talk about how we're going to start this time lapse here as we are going to be starting to build our nice palace, our end stone palace, I guess you could call this, even though there's not really any end stone in it whatsoever but you know what that's okay it's got some sort of similar colors it's got that cream and that purple that we'd use down below as well and we also threw in a few other colors later you'll see but we got building this layer here and of course after spending like five days or so building that we ran out of blocks so i decided to celebrate by uh, taming some horses i know it doesn't really sound like me don't worry we'll kill some later okay don't worry all horse haters we'll kill them but anyway, didn't we just recently finish a time lapse? That's right, we're going to the nether to get some more blocks and then another time lapse. That's right, I wanted to make some solid progress here. So we spent another 10 or so days just building this palace. And here is where it really starts to take shape. You can see the different layers and textures and stuff. This was a very complicated thing to build because it's just so awkward in so many spaces, but it's quite simple in shape and size, especially in comparison to our castle we've got over there, which is like all over the place. This is very symmetrical in comparison. However, I think this thing's bigger, so I decided to celebrate this fact with killing some horses. Lots of dead horses. Lovely. Very, very nice. And I also decided, you know what? Let's make their horse pen a little bigger so we can breed more horses to kill. And I also killed this horse child. Why? Because I can. I then went and got some emeralds as I noticed my axe didn't have efficiency 5 on it. So I bought a book and I put it on my axe. Very nice. But most of my tools were getting rather low. So we had to go fix them. Oh my gosh, that was loud. I'm sorry. And then I did something I said I wasn't going to do. The diamond trick. I know I said I wasn't going to do it, but I've seen other people do it and I feel like I've got FOMO about the diamond trick. So I decided, you know what? Until day 1100, we'll do the diamond trick because I kind of want to get like a diamond beacon as that'd be really cool. And this is just a really efficient and very easy way of getting diamonds. I also killed some horses on the way, as you can see there. Nearly died a few times, but after five days, we reached 1100 and we had 110 diamond ore blocks. Look at this tower. Look how beautiful that thing looks. Oh my gosh. And after digging them all out with our fortune free pickaxe, how many diamonds do we have? You're wondering a lot. I don't want to do the maths, but 27 blocks of diamond plus five extra. It's gorgeous. Okay. That's the only word you can use to describe it. I went and got my other diamonds that were sitting in my chest and turned those into blocks. We've nearly got a stack of diamond blocks. Very, very nice. Not bad at all for a single player world, but it was time to get a new mascot. So I got Andrew here, the small mascot, and put him in a little fish tank just outside where we're building. And then I had to go collect more coal as I'd ran out of coal. Like I said earlier, this needs to be fixed, but I thought I'd focus on getting like the roof of this palace done for now. And we needed a lot of glass for that. So I went and collected a load of sand, brought that back to our super smelter. Got it smelting, of course. Got some poppies to dye the glass as we're not going to be doing just plain old glass. Oh, no, no. We're going to be doing different colors. You will see later when we start the time lapse. And of course, it required some more crimson wood. So I had to go and get some more crimson wood. My gosh, I'm so sick of using crimson wood. I did manage to kill a couple of piglin children while I was there, though. So that was very satisfying. And I headed home with all our wood, probably enough to last us for now. And then just before I was about to start the time lapse, I killed a few horses and this wandering trader. And then it was time lapse time again. And this is a big old time lapse. I'll tell you that for free. I know you're already watching the video for free, but that's also free. I know we give a lot of free stuff out here. Speaking of things are free, if you're watching this video this far, have you subscribed yet? Make sure you do. Anyway, we're working on the roof of this palace here and the main thing on the top is this glass dome. And oh my gosh, this thing is a pain to build. So much so that you'll see I kind of just give up and don't finish it here. I got this bit done and then I got working on this bit and it took me so long and I just decided, you know what? It's not worth it for now. So instead I decided to work on that problem I had earlier where I kept 
running out of coal. And rather than just going and mining coal, which to be honest is quite boring, I decided to build a farm I'd never built before. It required a few materials, including some quartz for some observers. Obviously you saw the pistons as well and some other things that we need for this, including a smoker, which I've never really crafted before, I don't think. I've always picked them up in villages, but I've never crafted them. And the farm we're going to be making is of course a kelp farm. As you can see here, I'm collecting the kelp I need. And this thing will automatically produce dried kelp for us, which is the best fuel if you have a dried kelp block. Did you come up with this farm by yourself, Joel? Of course not. Why would I ever do that? Instead, I copied a tutorial from Kmond. I'll make sure to link that in the description. A very effective design. It might not be the most effective, but you know what? I enjoyed it. It's very simple to make and it does kind of look kind of cool. Although, to be honest, I'm not really a big fan of how redstone farms look. I always cover them up and I'll probably cover this one up at some point. But you can see here, it just requires a load of pistons, a load of observers, and you just repeat the same thing layer after layer. As you can see here, we went up to like six or five layers of observers, which is more than enough for what we need. And then of course you have to do the whole thing at the top where you make a system for the kelp to come back down into the smoker which required like you know some weird water system with some gates and such and also using some slabs so you could put down some water that ran on the top like this and then after you've done all that of course you get rid of the slabs you can hear it going already which is nice this thing was producing kelp quicker than I could build the farm and it all ends up in this little hopper here down this glass tube and once it's in there the smoker actively and it turns it into dried kelp, which is perfect for us. Now we can just leave this and we get dried kelp blocks. Very, very nice. But the palace is still not complete. How is it still not complete? We've been working on this for like 124 days now. So I decided to go for a similar theme to how we have in the castle where we've got that kind of weird ender eye with some emeralds. I used a neverite block in the center of the other one, but I'm not gonna get four neverite blocks for this as that would take way too long and honestly, it's not worth it really, is it? But speaking of the palace that we have been building, it's time to finish that dome. And we got working on it. We spent about 10 days or so fixing this dome. It takes so long. Like it's really, really, really awkward. And you can see here, I started with purple glass at the bottom. I went to magenta next. And in a second, you shall see, I'm moving on to cyan. I wanted to blend them all together and make this sort of like gradient effect. And I think it ended up looking rather nice if I do say so myself. However, it's still not complete. There's something we need to add on the top, which we're going to start adding on now. Also, I wanted to add this sort of like glow ring just near the top as I thought it would look kind of cool. And I used these crimson trap doors and some crimson planks to make this really cool sort of effect, which when you look at it from down below or up high, it looks kind of cool. Yeah, that's right. I said it. But then we worked on the spire of the dome as well, which required some iron fences. And also I wanted to add some of those like sort of halo-y type rings around the top. And we did like three layers of this. And if we pan away now, look at it. It's done. The outside is done. And oh my gosh, I love it. It looks so cool. I'm very, very happy with this. However, I did notice that I'd missed a block somehow. I had to go plop that in. And then I killed some horses for fun because I deserved it. Good job me. However, this palace is kind of out of the way of everything else. So I thought, you know what? Let's link it up. And the way we're going to link it up is we're going to make this path all the way over to our base where our castle is. You can see I've made this cool path design here. Looks very nice. It's very similar to the one we have running up to the castle. But on the way of the path, I noticed there's loads of space there and I thought, I could put something in the space there. And I came up with an idea. And that idea, you'll see, is, is a bit of a weird one. And I think people who like horses are going to hate it. But people who hate horses like me are going to love it. As just in the middle of the path here where these two mounds are, we're going to get rid of those mounds and we're going to get building a nice building. Hey, I said that. Kind of weird design, very different. I wanted to use some note blocks in this build because I've heard people like note blocks now and I was like, you know what? I could use some note blocks in this build. And we built this sort of weird sort of building here, which looks kind of odd. And I'll explain what it is in a second. But before we can do that, we need to make it look all nice up to it by adding in a lovely path to all the different entrances and exits. Killed this llama and his wandering trader because why not? 
But there's one thing missing from the building, and it required some red nether bricks. And to make red nether bricks, you need nether wart. And I couldn't find where my nether wart is, so I had to go to the nether to find some nether wart. And had a bit of a struggle, as you can see here, getting some from this bastion. But we got out, and we also found some in this nether fortress. Also, I killed a wither skeleton while protecting myself, and it dropped a wither skull first time. Yay. I wish I had that luck when I was actually wanting wither skeleton skulls. But it took me a good time to get all the nether wart I needed, and in fact, I just couldn't get enough of the amount of nether bricks. I needed so instead I went back planted some of it at home so I could grow my own and we'd have plenty of never what and then I brought the horses over to here as you can see and you're probably wondering what this is well here's how it works you breed two horses the baby horses fall down this hole here into the slaughter chamber the reason I've done this is because you can only breed tamed horses and it was getting kind of annoying figuring out which horses were tamed and which ones weren't so to make sure I only killed the non-tamed horses we made sure that the babies would fall down as you can see here and then we would kill the ones down there and leave the ones that are tamed up here to just breed babies for us to slaughter. I realize I sound like a crazy person as I uh, go through this very sped up footage of me killing horses. But look, the babies are here and to celebrate, I thought, you know what? Let's kill one. Oh my gosh, am I a bad person? Well, you're 30 minutes into this video, so you're a bad person too. Just kidding, you're not. I'm the bad person. You're just merely watching. On day 1153, I decided to add a little bridge over this little river we had here rather than just building a path over the top of it. I thought I'd make a cool little granite bridge with some mushroom blocks. Why? I don't know. I quite like how they look, so I use them. Don't judge me. I don't know what it is, but I always struggle to build bridges, and this one was no different, and I came up with a design which I think is kind of okay. It looks a bit weird, but I'm happy with it, all right? And then it was time to farm some of our never warts, so I used my fortune pickaxe, as apparently that helps, to get a load of never wart, enough to make as many blocks as we actually needed. And what is it for? Well, I'm adding a sign above the horses here. Can you guess what it says? I bet you can't. Well, let's have a look around, shall we? Yep, that's right, it says die. <laughs> Just making it very obvious for you. Oh, and I forgot to mention there's actually a skull on the back of this thing Just in case you wanted to know anyway, do you know what I need more diamonds? My FOMO is really acting up and I thought you know what if we're gonna do this Let's just go for it as far as I can see it, it's Mo Yang's fault that they left this bug in the game and not mine So I'm gonna mine all my diamonds and even though it's a fairly strong success rate of getting diamonds when you mine down I was still very excited every time I mined into diamonds apart from then when I mined directly into lava below the diamonds But I spent a good few days doing this and um, we came across a few problems along the way not only lava like this but also so you'll see in a second, I'll switch to some replay mod footage as I wasn't recording at the time as to be honest It's the same thing you're just digging down digging up diamonds and that's it But here you can see what happened. This is from my perspective So I was just mining down, you know mining my own business then bang I'm dead. It was that quick. Look how quick this happens Dead instantly. I don't know how it happened And I also just respawned back in the good old jungle biome as I'd forgot to set my bed as I was you know Sleeping near the swamp, but I managed to get all my stuff back and luckily I hadn't lost anything Especially not my diamond ore blocks, which was nice And I went back to it as you can see here more and more diamonds and then oh, yeah We got some more replay footage because another creeper killed me What is it with the creepers dropping down the holes and just exploding not fun? But anyway a few more diamonds a couple of horse kills here and there because, you know, it's just fun to kill the horses while looking for more swamps. Oh, and more lava as well. As effective as this method is, you are digging down and you are going to dig into a lava quite a lot. So, yeah. Anyway, look how many diamond ore blocks I got. Three and a bit stacks. I decided to dig them up into a tower here, make a little time lapse and dig all the way down. Look at all the diamonds go. And more importantly, look at my enchanting levels. 20 enchanting levels from just those diamonds there. Very, very nice. And it was enough to make 48 diamond blocks, meaning we've got 104 and we're not far off, I think it's 60, off a diamond pyramid, which is lovely. But when I went to the end there to fix my tools, I noticed that the surrounding area of this palace is hideous. So we're going to fix that by making it look not hideous. Yay! And we had to start by like terraforming the ground around it a little bit, getting rid of like different weird bits of stone that was around. And also on the other side of the palace here, getting rid of the water. And you can see here, I decided to make something out front. What is he making? A, A, a circle? No, that's right. 
a fountain because I like fountains and I wanted to make a fancy fountain, a quite big fountain here, as you can see, with different bits of water spraying out. And I wanted to add a gold block on top, just, you know, I think gold blocks look kind of cool. And especially when it's sort of like at the top of a fountain like this. And if we pan out, you can see here, it looks rather pretty, doesn't it? Oh, lovely. But a fountain wasn't enough for me. Oh no, I needed more. And what I needed was bricks. So I went to my masons, remembered that most of them had died, so started making some more masons and started trading some bricks with them as well as converting some villagers along the way. Also, I have like 10 stacks of emeralds in my chest system, but I don't know why. I always just go and trade pumpkins for emeralds. It's just a force of habit, I think. I'm always not used to being rich. But here you can see we're trading some bricks with these masons to make some brick blocks as we're going to be adding a nice sort of, you know, brick path for this area. I feel like this area is very prestigious and it needed a brick floor rather than, you know, a coarse dirt and bodzel floor like the path we have leading up to here. And also, I wanted to add some fancy hedges as well as some nice flowers. So I went and got some flowers from a flower field, specifically some red and white tulips. Also killed some horses on the way. Look how aggressively I come in there. Jeez, I scare myself sometimes. And then when we got back, we planted these rose bushes as well as the tulips here to make a very nice looking modern garden sort of thing but look not enough diamond blocks so you know what time it is on day 1172 we headed to the swamp to do some diamond digging and for some reason i decided to make the worst time lapses ever as you can see it's just some holes appearing every so often look there's a hole 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 just holes that's all it is really but i did this four times as you can see it took us about seven days i think or like six days to get all these diamonds and how many stacks of diamond ore do we have that's right four and a half nearly oh my gosh that's a lot of diamonds and i thought i'd do a little sped up video of me mining the diamonds and it kind of looks a bit mental so i regret that but look how many diamonds we have we have enough for a full stack of diamond blocks plus two extra very very nice and what are we going to do with these well we're going to make a diamond beacon. And we're going to make this diamond beacon a fancy diamond beacon. We're going to stay here forever as a little flex. As you can see, all diamond blocks. Look at it on this little pedestal there. Oh, it's so cool. I've never made one of those before. Fully out of diamonds. And it looks awesome. And I thought this area was looking great. Apart from the fact I just had a load of chests and shulker box sat there. So I decided to spend... The next four days, that's right, four days, which is 40 minutes of my time, sorting this out. It took a long time to do, and honestly, it was very boring. So I tried to condense it to as small of a little part of the video for you, as you can see here. It's literally just me going back and forth, putting stuff from one chest to another chest. And I also had so much stuff that just wouldn't fit in my sorting system, because I just didn't have that in the sorting system. So I had to figure out where to put those as well. But luckily, most of it was just grass and stone. And as you can see here, we're done. Finally, everything's in. It's all sorting. I love it. So what did I do after that? I went and chopped down some trees. I got a load of leaves. I got a load of wood. Why? Because I don't want those trees to be there. And I want to make my own trees over here, as well as adding a little pond there with our little tiny mascot, Andrew. He stayed with us the entire time we're building this palace, and I thought I'd make him somewhere to stay forever, and he can be there swimming around very happily after being trapped in that two-by-one block that he was in before. Look at him. Look how much happier he is. Might bring in some friends at some point, but maybe not. I haven't spoken to him yet, and he might just quite like the space. Also, I moved Marty over here to be right underneath the diamond pyramid. Oh, look at the diamond pyramid. Isn't that so cool? I celebrated by looking at it by killing some horses. And then I started to link up the paths. I built quite a bit of it, and I was just like, how do I link this up? I feel like there needs to be more buildings over there, but we've only got nine days left, meaning I don't have time for more buildings, so maybe that's something I can do in the future. Instead, I decided to finish the path on the other side and link it up to our castle finally i also had to build another bridge this one it was a very weird looking one but i kind of like it and you'll see here a map the map of the area which of course we're going to update but we're not only going to update it oh no no we're going to complete that entire circle i thought this would be quite a fun little thing to do just to see the entire area see how much we've affected it all as you can see the palace is pretty huge there like it takes up the same amount of size as the castle we built which is pretty ridiculous as that castle is kind of big but we spent a while flying around this actually takes longer than you think just because you get confused of where the maps are or where they've been etc 
Patreon. You don't want to make duplicates. But look, it's done. Look how awesome that looks. We got the palace over there. We got the castle in this entire area. The path linking them up. Beautiful. Let's celebrate with some chicken killing because I haven't done this in a long time and it needed to be done. I'm sorry. Look how many eggs I got. I decided to make some chickens for Angelina Jolie to eat. Oh, that's so fun. I love watching her kill those chickens. Very, very cool. But it is the month of June, which is, of course, Pride Month. So to be the best ally I could be, I decided to add a massive pride flag into my world. And I'm not sure if this is the right one. I got a bit confused when researching it. So I'm sorry if it's not, but I wanted to do something. So I did this and I hope that's OK. But we're getting ever so close to the end of this video. I decided, you know what? Let's go have a nice sleep in our bed to bring us to our final day where I bred up some pandas in hopes to get a brown panda. But alas, no brown pandas. I then decided to add some shaders and go on a little shader tour here of the new build we've just done. Look how awesome that looks with shaders. Everything just looks so much better with shaders. Look at it. Apart from the frame rate, that doesn't look better. I also said hi to Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet. So I hadn't done that yet. As well as saying hi to Gerald and his stupid friend. And then we watched the sunset and that brought us to day 1000. 200. What an incredible journey. This has taken me a long time to record these videos. So here are some stats for you showing some different things. We mined a load of diamonds. We did a load of building and most importantly, we had a lot of fun. Well, most importantly, we killed a lot of horses. Not as many as I would like though. But there you have it. 1,200 days in a Minecraft world. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and leave a like. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you another time. Good. Bye.